<laughs> uh, so the low past 11. Uh, my name is Khalid Bay. This is the Committee for Economic Development Downtown Metropolitan Planning, of which I'm the chair. Also present uh, for that committee is Councilor Michael Green. Uh, actually, no. Well, it's good to have you anyway, Councilor Green. Uh, Councilor Carney, Councilor Hogan, Councilor White, who's not here. And in addition, Councilor Michael Green, Councilor Paniagua, and Councilor Driscoll from the administration. We have uh, Greg Lowe, uh, Chief uh, Policy Officer. We have Chief Financial Officer, Frank Oliva, Commissioner Collins. Who else can I see? Uh, Joe Barry from Law and uh, Julia. I forgot. Uh, couldn't see you last week. My apologies, Commissioner Parks. Mm -hmm. uh, and Commissioner of DPW, uh, Jeremy Robinson in the back. And I'm hoping I'm not. Oh, Mary Robinson from uh, <coughs> Aaron. And I believe, oh, and Director Rudd hiding in the back back there. So, Eric Ennis, I see you as well. So, uh, welcome. Appreciate you being here. I believe we only have a single item on special permit. And I don't see. Ah, here he is. Jeff. Good afternoon, Counselor. Uh, the special permit before the committee today is uh, for a restaurant at property situated at 471 489 Westcott Street. Uh, the Planning Commission approved the uh, special permit uh, at their meeting on September 20th, and in doing so, uh, granted six waivers from the zoning ordinance with respect to off street parking, driveway spacing, driveway location, curbing, side yard treatment, and the sign regulations. All right. uh, any of my colleagues have any questions on this item? No. No? No. no. This will be the quickest economic development committee <laughs> meeting ever. <laughs> uh, thanks, Jeff. So, here are no issues. Uh, I'm assuming we're okay to put this on the agenda. Yes. Councilor Hogan, Councilor yes. Carney. Yep. Appreciate it. Uh, that was quick. And I believe that we did, in fact, have a single item. So, Councilor Green, uh, floor is yours. Jim, is, is finance next? Uh, no, it is neighborhood. Well, I'll take that again. So, we have a single item for neighborhoods. <laughs> I'll take that item on behalf of Councilor Allen, who is absent. Uh, and so, Commissioner Collins, do you know who's presenting on that item? I think you guys have a single item, Jim. You know what that is? Yeah, and, uh, permission uh, for encroachment on Van, Van Rensselaer. Van Rensselaer is the address 720, Van Rensselaer, I think. Yeah, somebody yeah. permits? No? Uh, if it's not clear, I'm, I'm not quite ready to, to, to present on this one. Uh, this is. Uh, uh, this is a right away encroachment on Van Rensselaer. Yeah, yeah. I will check into it and find out. I don't. I don't have information for it. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Hogan, a hidden you know. level or one of those out, outfits there. Uh, Mendia's got it. Uh, Councilor, I'll, I'll give her a call right now. Okay, thanks. All right, appreciate it. Councilor Hogan, did you? Did you I, I'm just thinking it's probably one of those. I, I, may, I would just freelance in here. It might be one of those uh, new. Uh, uh, offices down on Van Rensselaer, so. No, I think she, he's, she and if she's available. Uh, my, my position was if you had looked it over and didn't see any issue then. No. Yeah, it's at the Iron Pier there. Oh, okay, that's the, the one that's we've been working on. That's, yeah. yeah, that's that's perfectly okay. okay. We've been working on that together. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, my, Myers Creek is that the one? Yeah, right. Okay. Myers Creek at Iron uh, Iron okay. Pier. Okay, well, yeah, my my apologies. I've been in. That's all right. That's all right. So been in contact with my office, and uh, we've been working on that together as collaborators. So I'm okay, okay. I, I, I can say that uh, I, I know it's gotten through all the approvals to get to, to the point where it's in front of the council right now. Okay. You go yeah, I'm fine with it. Yep. Okay. All right. Appreciate so, it, Council. Thank you. Yeah, it was just—it was just an awning to protect uh, the front of the building when people step out in rain. And yep. When you're dealing ending. with zoning or planning, there's no such thing. Just <laughs> <an awning. laughs> no such thing as a simple. Just an awning. This is true. This is right, true, Councilor. <laughs> 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 
we'll move that item onto the agenda as well. And now, Council Green, appreciate it. Sure. So we'll take over the uh, finance items. First one is a correction to the tax rolls. Looks like the two is 130 Peter Street and then 715 Coughlin Ave. Yes, good morning, Councilors. I'm Ann Gallagher, the first deputy since Dave retired yesterday. Uh, those are corrections. Um, one is a correction from New York State, the one on um, Coughlin. Just to, to they, they, we made an error. They, they made an error. It kind of went back and forth. We got their opinion to give the person back their exemption. Peter Street. Uh, there was a um, just a correction. The gentleman added his mother, and we gave him back his exemptions. Okay. That's about it. Any questions on these? We're going to miss Mr. Clifford. Yes, we, we will. Welcome you. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, members, okay with moving this in? Okay. Yes. Yep. Looks like the next one is the services agreement with Syracuse University. Councilors, uh, Frank Leva, the city's chief administrative officer. Frank, can you pull that forward, the microphone towards, just so I'm not obstructed you. Perfect. That work? Perfect. Okay. God knows you need a good view of me. Um, so uh, as most uh, councilors know, uh, we had an existing services agreement um, with Syracuse University. Uh, it expired in June of this year. Uh, we've been negotiating with the team up at SU to replace that with a new agreement, and uh, I am delighted that we're able to put that in front of you to begin the dialogue around it. Um, it, is, it starts off as very similar to the previous agreement, so all of the um, in-kind services that were in that agreement will remain in the new agreement uh, with um, some additions. Uh, those additions are, are highlighted in the letter uh, to Mr. Kapanis that you have, um, and uh, they include adding uh, maintenance of uh, a section of Thornton Park that borders Ostrom Ave. Um, there's uh, a number of students who would like to use, uh, particularly the basketball courts, but feel in the evening that it uh, gets a, a little concerning that there's no view of the uh, courts from Ostrom, so the, the university will take over the maintenance of that plot. Um, Schedule C that you received as part of the draft agreement was uh, not the best copy. So we have a, an additional one. Uh, Councilor Hogan? Yes. I can impose on you. So uh, that's so Thornton Park. Um, that uh, will also include um, adding the uh, replacement and addition of sidewalks on Ostrom Ave at the uh, expense of the uh, university. Uh, the city will strike um, crosswalks across Ostrom um, in, uh, in front of the park. Um, the city has agreed as the new sidewalk maintenance program comes on, the city has agreed to waive the uh, university's sidewalk maintenance fees as those come online. Our estimate from uh, Commissioner, former Commissioner Clifford, retired Commissioner Clifford, I'm not sure what the language is, was that that's about a $35,000 a year potential bill. So they have about 134 different properties. Um, so I'm sorry, with that, we're, we're waiving that fee, but are we then going to go through and still do their sidewalks? We, we are not. So, okay. they, so yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. Right. So they will continue to do all of the sidewalk maintenance and snow clearing that they're doing now around Walnut. Uh, so essentially Bird. they're just opting out of the sidewalk program. We are, we're in exchange for them maintaining those, all of those sidewalks, including the new ones on Ostrom. Um, we will not collect the $35,000. Okay. So that will be a separate part of an agreement or is that going to be part of this agreement? It is part of this agreement. Um, what, the, the, what this agreement calls for, Councillor Hogan, is for them to hold back a small portion of their payment. Um, they will then take that hold back, use it to pay their fee, 
um, their sidewalk fee, and then we'll true up at the end of each year. Yeah, I understand the mechanics, but legally, how is there an opt-out clause in the municipal sidewalk? No, that's why they'll, they will actually be paying the fee, but it's wrapped it's wrapped up in this agreement. So that's how we're evading. That's how we're evading. Uh, ev evading is a kind of a pejorative <laughs> approach. It's how we're sidestepping. Um, Let's see. So, in addition to the sidewalks, um, <clears throat> the uh, and the, or excuse me, the crosswalks, um, the uh, the city will be um, adding a, an additional code inspector uh, to focus on the university area, and uh, Commissioner Collins can speak specifically to that. Uh, we'll also be adding some additional coaching around the permitting process. Uh, as you is concerned that their folks don't always have a clear view to the way permitting goes and aren't able to expedite and uh, there's already some of this coaching and assistance in place for any commercial developer and uh, eshu will be able to avail themselves of that so I, i'm sorry that i actually I had, I had a question on that because i was a little bit i mean i know that we offer up the ability for you know business developer whoever's doing it to sure. sort of yep. get walked through mm -hmm. the process are we committing an individual just to go up there or are they going to send people to us like how does that I, I, i'm going to yeah. let commissioner Collins I'm, I'm just talk a little about unclear about how that's going to work i mean are we are we taking a staff member away from somebody you know other projects to, yeah I, I, to just I, go send them up to the university so excellent question and uh, the, the direct answer is absolutely not okay so what uh what we're doing uh we've been throughout the last several months been able to uh, staff back up within our permitting department and frankly within our codes department uh, as a whole uh, we're now at a staffing level that is appropriate where we are able to provide the same level of services that we that we do really with with any of our, our major developers to make sure that uh, on their end they are beyond clear around everything that they need so that we can uh, we can assist them in shepherding the project on time but we're not we're not stepping out of line of what we would provide for uh, really for any other developer and and I guess the, you know the other question that sort of goes along with that is you know like who the, where, where are we at like at staff wise like how many individuals actually do this type of work and are they you know recent hires are they you know because I know you said we recently got back to probably where we are they recent hires or are they individuals that have been around for a while that are familiar enough that when they're going and coaching or educating the university staff that they're prepared to handle that so that there aren't any issues going forward i mean what's so uh so so yes and okay. uh so yeah. um uh we the, the senior uh program manager uh position or uh, uh plans the, the the senior uh person to see oversee the planning part of it that position has been uh empty since medea uh, moved up to become director of the central permit office. Um, we have um, filled that position. Also, the person who was the junior has um, uh, in the position has uh, moved up to be senior as well. So there's an outside and there's an inside. And our director came out of that position and so is, is able to provide the additional coaching we're needed. So uh, overall, we feel that we've got the coverage that we need for all the development that's going on. And that includes the ability to provide this type of support to Syracuse University. Um, one of the more interesting uh, additions to the agreement, um, as I think most of you know, the um, Syracuse Police Department has been working really hard to set up a pre-academy cadet program, which would primarily recruit out of the City High School's PSLA, to be specific. Um, that program is not fully developed yet, um, but once it is, part of the curriculum is for those cadets to rotate through a number of different assignments within the department. What will be added to that rotation is that cadets would rotate through an assignment um, manning a post, uh, two posts actually, one at Shine um, Student Center and one on uh, South Campus um, as part of their rotations. Um, there's a cost obviously to the city of the salary of that um, cadet but there's also a tremendous benefit to the training of that cadet as they go through that part of the rotation. So um, we put it as a cost to the city, um, but we also think there's a tremendous benefit to the um, 
to the city and the cadet program. Frank? Yes. Um, when I'm reading this, though, it looks like it says sworn non-probationary officers. So are the two officers cadets or are they regular officers? They are, they are cadets. Yeah, we'll need to. That's a good catch in the graph. We'll need to change yeah, it's, that. It, it's oh. number eight there. Yep. It's Thank you, Council. Um, UNSAC, uh, the University Neighborhood Services Agreement, uh, will remain funded at the same amount um, currently, uh, half a million dollars. Um, two changes that uh, were requested um, by uh, actually both the university and the city uh, pretty quickly agreed on these. Um, since the university is providing 100% of the funding, their seat on the allocation committee would go to a voting seat. Right now they have a non-voting seat, so they would be one vote. They wouldn't have a majority vote. They wouldn't be able to control the vote, but they would actually get a vote. And then the other change, uh, which uh, the city quickly uh, agreed to, is that recipients of funding would no longer be able to vote on the allocation committee. Um, they'd have to recuse themselves from, uh, from that vote. Finally, most importantly, uh, the university will increase its payments to the city from the current $1 million um, to $2 million. That would ramp up over a four-year period of time, um, and beginning with the first year of the, uh, of the agreement. Frank, just to, to follow up on that, that is actually, that, that's a payment that is money going into that account. It's not in lieu of the difference, you know, in kind. So the, it is not in lieu of any of the in-kind, absolutely. It is a cash payment. Okay. In addition to the only deduction within that payment would be for the payment of the, the uh, sidewalk fee. Okay. The that was the, I, I figured the if that's what we're the, yep. maybe we're I, uh, accounting for yep. some of the other things. I created a very quick and dirty comparison of the highlights of the finances. Again, Councilor Hogan, if I could impose on you. You're imposing on me awful lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll get me back at some point. <laughs> so the additional in-kind above the cash payment, um, uh, Councilor Carney, to your point, um, there are some additions to what the university refers to as Schedule A. Um, all of the pre-existing Schedule A in-kind <laughs> services um, will remain the same. Some of the additions, about uh, $200,000 in sidewalk and snow plowing maintenance, particularly around Gordon Park, as already mentioned, um, and some um, uh, improvements to Thornton Park for a total of about $465,000 in additional in-kind services above and beyond the cash payment. Yeah, okay. Great. Uh, our costs above and beyond, um, $3,000 is a guess for the striping. Um, $35,000 because we're not going to be, be, be receiving the sidewalk fee, $48,000 base salary for the code inspector, and $65,000 for the uh, two SPD cadets uh, salaries. Again, we're getting a significant benefit in their training, but uh, we'll, we'll call it a cost. So comparing the in-kind above and beyond the cash payments, um, about 465,000 on the part of the university to about, uh, excuse me, 150,000 to uh, the city. That's about the best summary I can give you, but I'm sure there are questions. For Thorndon Park, um, I know you mentioned one of the issues there would be the sight lines from the courts to Ostrom. So was the idea that they would take down the trees, or how do they accomplish that? Their, their, their plan is to uh, prune the trees considerably, take down um, a lot of the shrubbery, um, and then maintain that over time. Uh, there was also some conversation, although it's not definitive, about the potential for uh, enhancing lighting. But that we never got that to completion, but they're, uh, they're interested in doing so. You're wrong, but isn't there elevation changes there that would prevent the sight lines? I feel like there's a hill in between the courts, right? I'm, you, you have the advantage on me, Counselor. I'm not as familiar with it as, as you probably are. Okay. Other questions on this? Um, yeah, I guess so. Uh, Frank, is there ever, and I hate to put this on Ann or Dave or anything else, but years ago when this 
uh, when you did this university neighborhood service agreement, which was an agreement, I believe, because we closed streets up there for them. That's where it all. The I think that's where it originated. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, that's just something that you know, we closed streets for them, you know, and so they they gave it to us. But um, I'm just wondering, has there ever been like, uh, at one point, uh, Commissioner Gamage gave a had a number of assessed value of Syracuse University properties. And he also had not only a value of the assessed, the assessed value of the properties, but what, how much they be would pay in the state or the city and the county if they were on the tax rolls. And I'm just wondering if we have anything like that at all, just so we can compare it, because I know in other cities, especially Boston, places like that, uh, I think there's a significant higher percentage of uh, money that goes into service agreements to the city of Boston than to us. Just so we can do a comparative analyst. So we did do that comparison. We didn't um, see it though. And you know, in Boston, you've got some universities that are paying um, a considerable amount. We think that this is a, on a comparison basis, a very generous contribution on the on the part of the university. Boston is the outlier, um, and not all of the universities in Boston voluntarily make these payments. And in fairness to Syracuse University, they are the single major um, nonprofit that is voluntarily making these payments. The other point to make, honestly, Counselor, you know, is that a fair comparison? It's, it's part of the U.S. tax code. It's part of the New York State tax code. It's not something that we, as a municipality, have any control over. We certainly can do the calculation. Commissioner Clifford has done it. We're, we're happy to provide it. Uh, I'm just uncomfortable about whether that's a fair comparison. Well, it's interesting you use the word fair because I think that, uh, you know, the university is, a, you know, I mean, when when you gobble up as we, you know, I've heard the mayor, I've heard consecutive mayors talk about them, you know, the what the challenges of the city of Syracuse, when we have 56% of our total assessed value, not the property, no total assessed value, and we try to make everything work on that. Yeah. You know, so I just would like to know that comparison that you mentioned, if we could maybe distribute to all the happy, city councilors. Happy to do it. Commissioner Clifford did do it um, for us a few months ago, and we'll dig that out and pass it around. Just so we know what we're voting. Absolutely. And maybe if you could do like a bullet point of all this. And I don't know, sure. Councilor, if you want to have a committee meeting on this or anything else, it's certainly up to you as the finance chair. Yeah, I mean, I think if there's, if there's a lot of questions on it, I'm happy to do that. Um, are there? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. What do you think, counselors? I mean, I'd like to have it moved on to the agenda. I mean, we could have a committee meeting, and I think it's probably appropriate. But I, I, you know, I'd urge that it be moved on to the agenda so that it's not held back another several weeks. Because whatever, or I, to your point, it, it, it we're, this is a voluntary payment that they're making. Yes, sir. This is, you know. I, I, I appreciate, you know, your, your point of, you know, what Boston's getting, well, how, you know, what, but I mean, the, the, they could come back tomorrow and just say, you know what, we're not going to do that. And they don't have to because they're, as much as we may not like that it, they're tax exempt and that, you know, a majority of the properties in the city aren't paying taxes, this is, this is what we're getting from them. I don't know that. I mean, and they're a big employer counselor. Yes. And I understand that. And a lot of their folks come from outside the city and they use city services and all that. So there, there can be arguments on both sides. But I, I just think, I think it's important that we know the total amount of it. Can't disagree. Well, certainly there's nothing uh, inappropriate about transparency. I just, uh, I think, you know, Councillor Kearney makes the, the point about is the, the, the information's important, is the comparison reasonable i think we can you know agree or disagree on that from from my perspective counselor all right look we're never going to be taxing their arts and science hall like it's just never gonna happen but where it is an issue is are there private student residents that they're planning to acquire and then take them off the tax rolls like that is a legitimate concern for me going forward they've done it with the marshall and are they going to do it four more times like that is sure. an issue that yeah. we should be concerned with but i mean i was on the council when we did the you know the uh the famous. library that never happened. <laughs> right. The bookstore yeah. pilot. Yeah. And oh, also, that's and also that's I it. mean, and you know, as, if, uh, as we talk about CIDA giving tax exempt, you know, uh, benefits to like student housing and things like that. I think we're, sure. you know, we're all in this together. And just as, and as you say, a transparency be important. Here. More information is always better. 
So, so my perspective on this, if the members of the committee are okay with it, is we would move it onto the agenda, and then if there's subsequent questions and we want to hold it and hold the committee meeting, that's what I would I would do with it if that's okay. I'm good we'll with that. Weigh in on it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm fine with moving it onto the agenda and then having. We have to hold it. We'll hold it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe that's all for finance. So, turn it over to whoever's next. James Conroy, didn't we do a, an analysis as well on behalf of the council? I feel like I've passed you on that in 2018 or something. With SU. The service agreements? Yeah. Yeah, we have, that, we have that data as well in the council office, right? Yeah. They were asking you to, if you would use the mic if you're. <laughs> it's okay. Perhaps if, if, if uh, I guess I was just asking if you still, I don't know if you still, if you keep those. I know our city emails are not like Gmail where you can just leave everything backing up for years. But if you still have any of that data, it would probably be good to share in addition with the information that Mr. Cleve is going to share from David Clifford uh, to share with Councillor Hogan and the rest of the council to get some perspective on what, you know, but as uh, as uh, Mr. Kaliva said, uh, uh, it's also important to note that that is the standard rather than the gold standard rather than the average of, of what most American cities do. But it would be good for context to know in, in these conversations as we have our conversations with Syracuse University, Councillor Hogan's point to look at what other cities do and you know what the what the numbers are. It'd be good if we had any more of that data that's still around to inform our decision making. I would think the city of Syracuse and Syracuse University would certainly want to strive to achieve a gold standard at some point. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but I would say as, as one of the two counselor, council district uh, councilors who represent the district, uh, seeing that the, the uh, contribution go from a million to two million is, is definitely seems a step in the right direction. So. Uh, well, we can't confuse the um, service agreement with UNSAC, but also I think it has to be clarified just for those hills of the discovery that we have currently uh, on uh, not the total assessed value of non-taxable properties owned by non-taxable entities is over $3 billion. So this was on the heels of that story um, that ran as a result of uh, the council trying to determine where we were not generating revenue. So just to add some additional perspective on, on why it became such a big, big discussion and uh, headline story back then. <clears throat> Jim, if you want to approach the mic. <laughs> this is a first. Um, <laughs> I'm just bring, you bringing you into years. the mix, buddy. <laughs> um, I remember when that happened from the prior administration and to Councilor Bay's point, there was some, maybe some leverage with Syracuse University and the other nonprofits, such as St. Joe's, was not inclined to pay anything. Right, right. So. Yeah, I mean, again, I guess my issue is at the end of the day, they're tax exempt for a reason that, you know, they don't, ha they, they don't have to pay us anything. Under now, current rules, right. Yeah, I mean, now, you know, the argument is, is you, we'd, we'd, you know, like them to contribute because they're using city services. But, I mean, you know, the, the, again, we sort of have to work with what they're unfortunately willing to do. Well, you know, not to sure. belabor this anymore, Council yeah. Carney, but, you know, the Carrier Dome was built by state money. I mean, the, the, the Syracuse University has no problems asking the state taxpayers to pay, to pay for things. And I don't, think we, I don't think we're amiss by asking if they could actually help us 
locally here to pay for some city services. I, again, I'm not disagreeing with you in principle. I'm saying, unfortunately, the facts are that they are. So we're coming back. Now, we, we can go and argue for more, and that's great. But, you know. The, the tough part is, you know, the uh, rules or the potential for change of rules would lie with the state legislature. And the state is the biggest non-taxable property owner in Syracuse. So I, I don't know how we get them to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> consider that, but we, we certainly need to. Like better state legislators. Yeah. <laughs> Jim, uh, Parks next? What's uh, education. Uh, education. Me? Uh, thank you. Is it? He said me. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, we have three items to go through. The first one from the Syracuse City School District. Uh, we have Tom Ferrara in the room. Uh, this is to authorize an agreement with the Kidini Architects for building condition surveys. Can you please? It's nice to see you all in person. I'm uh, Tom Ferrara from the City School District. I'm the Director of Facilities. I think all the counselors here have met me over the years. Um, the school district is required, all public school districts have to do a building condition survey every five years. Uh, the state used to require us to do what was called an annual visual inspection on the years that we weren't doing the building condition survey. So the AVI, which is the acronym, that was like the $100,000 study. We'd do one of those every year. And then the fifth year, we would do the building condition survey, which is about a million dollar fee. Um, and then the state changed the regulations um, and now you just have to do the building condition survey every five years. Um, and then, so our last one was in 2015. Well, the state changed the rules again because they were getting inundated with these. So they phased them over three years. So in last year, we had to do our last annual visual inspection, which we did. It was done by Kadeni Architects. And this year we did the RFP for the building condition survey. There was four firms that sum were submitted. Um, I'm trying to remember who was on the committee. President Hudson. It's myself, it, President Hudson. Um, I'm, a, I'm on two committees right now, so I can't um, remember. Um, Robbins, right? Yeah. Um, Mrs. Yeah. Robbins, yeah. yeah. And City I'm, engineer I'm and myself were on the committee, uh, and uh, Mr. Rutt. Um, and uh, it was unanimous. We uh, picked Kadeni Architects. Um, it's about a million dollar fee. It's actually pretty similar to what we paid. Uh, five years ago. It's actually less than what we budgeted. Um, and this is almost 100% reimbursed by uh, the state education department. This one is a little different. They actually reimburse us um, by the square foot of our buildings based on um, a certain amount of money. But um, I checked with the CFO and we might have to pay a little, but they, they, they cover the majority of this fee will be covered. It would be reimbursed to us. And this has already been presented to the school board and approved. Correct. The school board uh, approved it, uh, did a resolution that we've sent to you folks. So now we're asking for your approval. Uh, we do have to get this work done pretty quickly. Uh, we have to get it submitted. There's deadlines to meet. Um, and with COVID and stuff, getting the RFP out uh, was a challenge in getting firms to respond. But we're, we're ready to, to rock and roll. Is, is this done while the students are in the classrooms, or how, how do you do this? Uh, we do it after hours in classrooms, but uh, like the roofs and the grounds and like the mechanical rooms, we can do those during the day. So we're, we'll be working uh, some pretty long days to get this done in all the buildings. Uh, the team that uh, chosen actually partnered with some other firms, so they, they have a pretty large group of team of people. So as soon as they're ready to, to go, they'll hit us probably with 10 or 12 people working on this at once at, at um, several buildings at once. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay, thank you, Tom. Thank you. Okay, uh, then we have um, Donna Briscoe, and we're gonna talk about amending the ordinance for the 7,500 to adding $15,000 to pay to the current PRO Act service agreement, correct? Correct. Go for it. So we are going to be having our annual flu clinics um, in October. Uh, we have one at the atrium, one at DPW, and we are going to be doing two for our public safety personnel. Um, so out at the fire training center, that will be a drive-through clinic. Um, this is something we do every year to encourage uh, staff to get their flu shots and um, 
you know, it is at a per shot uh, lower cost than having someone go to uh, either the pharmacies directly or to their doctor. So it's one of the reasons we encourage it. Um, we would like to see people get their flu shots this year. Any so, questions? Um, just the one. If, if, so this covers 500 of our employees, and you told me that before that we never really reached that, that amount of employees. However, if we did, we do still serve them. Correct. Right. We would just have to come back and ask to amend for an increase. Um, but in prior years, I think 325 is the most we've had. Um, you know, last year, it, it, it's kind of hard to predict what we'll have this year. Um, last year, we, because of COVID, it was, you had to pre-register, uh, which I think a lot of people didn't do. Um, this year, there will be walk-ins. Uh, we're obviously gonna have to practice our social distancing and uh, we'll recommend masks and all of that, but um, we don't anticipate to have more than the 500. If we do, I will be back here to ask for more. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, thank you, Donna. Thank you. And lastly, um, in our last um, meeting, we, we transferred five thousand uh, dollars to the um, count to the clerk's account to the to the council account. Uh, this was this is for to suffice for the projects of the Syracuse uh, Youth Advisory Council. A uh, three thousand uh, dollars allocation to for Rice who is um, running a program, it's a language service program for the, for the youth uh, that come to Syracuse with no English skills. They're preparing them to be successful in their academic year and at the Syracuse City School District and other, other schools. Um, so $3,000 are allocated for that particular project. The other 2,000 are allocated to the uh, families handling disabilities in the household, and they have created a how to access a, a manual, a, these services in, from the community, and this will be presented in different agencies, uh, a language appropriate, so that they can um, access the services that they need. So this uh, money will be a uh, holding um, rice will hold this two thousand dollars in an escrow account until the youth advisory council comes with the three quotes quotes that i've asked of them for the print uh, of the manual um, so if, are there any questions about this no are we okay with doing this thanks for your work on it council Penagua. thank you okay that's thank me thank you Yes. Thank you. Who's next, or Jimmy? What's next, Mr. Parks? Okay. We have the commissioner here. We're in show business here. <laughs> Julie Lafayette, Commissioner of Parks Recreation. Real difficult one this week. Uh, authorized payment for $3,000 for movie licensing so that we can show free movies. Starting with, instead of our haunted house, because we feel that's still a safety issue, we're going to show a movie instead under Burnett Turf. Adam's family, but we figured instead of coming back here every season, just 3,000 so that will get us to the end of the fiscal year so we can plan more events. Okay. That's what we're showing, Adam's family up yes. in Burnett? Is it one of the original ones? It's the, car the cartoon the car one from a few oh, years ago because the second one's coming out right now. It's a cartoon one? Yes. It's not the... Not the Adam's family It's like values. three years old or so. Oh, okay. We're just new stuff. That's not in my letter, though. Okay. <laughs> Is there any questions of our... <laughs> no. Cecil B. Yeah, and here where's the where's it being shown? Was Burnett. It in, we, in we, the park, it, outdoors? No, in the turf, because we, that the way turf. we don't have to cancel for any weather issues. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, yeah we can have it anyway. Cool. So. Okay. I'd recommend the Adams Family Values from the 90s. Great. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I would suggest the Christina Ricci version, particularly. Well, you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> you know. It's not yeah. the credits. <laughs> well, it's just, you know. Jeez. I'm sure everyone enjoys the animated version, but the one from the 90s was great. It was great. I, I agree with you, Councilor Carney. Bipartisan love. Yeah. Could we accommodate 
the first district council. The first district council. <laughs> we'll do a private I showing. Right. We'll do a private showing. <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to try to get a vote on this, Councilor Kearney. I I am in favor of this. Is let's, yes. let's we're not on the it. Parks Committee. I'm not asking. Are you sure? <laughs> I can share it. I'm asking Councilor Driscoll. I'm in favor, Councilor Hogan, despite Thank the uh, not Zip. just in the Ricci version. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Done. Okay, now a committee that I chair and that I'm, I know I'm on. <laughs> yeah, you're on that one. <laughs> All right, so the first item is the lease agreement with uh, DPW for 341 Pete Street. So someone that's here to speak to that. Oh, do you want to? I, I don't know. Is someone else handling Councilmember jokes? Sorry. Uh, oh yes, yeah, sorry. I am. Yeah. Well, the, the, he's he has one item, so I don't know if there's someone from the police department just to speak yeah, to that. So because I, I don't know. Do we want to do we want to go with Councilmember jokes now? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, might as well. Yeah, we can get it out of the way. Does anyone anyone care to speak to it, Frank? Uh, so this is actually an uh, it is both a police and an IT item, uh, which is why I'm here. Um, the uh, police department, as the city, uh, had a long-standing contract with uh, MA Pulse, and they provide most of the uh, IT consulting hours at the police department. We did that through a piggyback contract uh, with the county. Um, at the end of last year, the county changed the way they uh, contracted with um, their IT consultants. Um, instead of individual contracts, they rolled them all into one. Um, it, it didn't allow us to piggyback on that contract any longer, so we needed to do our own, the police needed to do their own um, direct contract with, uh, with MA Pulse. So um, we did an RFP, um, Dave Proak and his team along with um, uh, Director Rudd did an RFP for IT services. Uh, Pulse was one of the winners and awardees there, so we just want to extend based on that RFP. Um, the contract that allows the police to use bolts as their primary contractor. Okay. Seems all right with me. Do any, anyone else on the committee have any questions? I don't think there's anyone else on. Anyone else is on the committee except for <laughs> yeah. me. But we're with you. So yeah, all right. I appreciate it. Yeah. As the lone member of the committee, I move this item for. <laughs> Thanks, Council. Okay. All right. Sorry about that, Commissioner Robinson. We just figured we'd. Get that one on. Um, so lease agreement. Yep, this is a leasing agreement with CIDA that, uh, for 341 Pete, where we use that area for our dumping. Yep. Okay. Bob, any questions or concerns about this one? No, sir. Okay. Motion to put it on. All in favor? Aye. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So the next item, uh, a renewal of the agreement with JMT. Neil Burke, uh, Department of Public Works. This is the first of up to three one-year extensions for the operation, uh, for the staffing and operation of the Traffic Management Center by JMT Inc. Uh, they do a lot of good work in there for us. The Traffic Management Center is where the interconnected traffic signals all come to a head at a number of different workstations. Uh, and they also help us with developing standard procedures. Uh, they're doing a lot of mapping tasks for us that we haven't done in the past. So when there's events in Clinton Square and you need, you need directions, now it tells you not to drive through Clinton Square. That's one of the multiple things they're doing for us. Okay. Any questions on uh, this one? No. Okay. All in favor of moving on? Well, no, I just want to ask, do we correct that issue with the sidewalks? I mean, as far as people calling in asking to have their side sidewalk replaced you know and then us informing them that there's a municipal sidewalk program do we correct that Corey or because it seems to be a disconnect there. I don't think that's JMT no no that's right but we're finished with that uh -huh. that's yes yeah and we are yes so uh, we had a conversation with Chris to make sure that he's making it clear to folks that I mean some people do call and are willing to pay but we we are informing them also that there is a sidewalk municipal sidewalk program I definitely think we should it should be in that estimate yeah there should be the wording should, on the estimate okay I mean, just yeah. to protect the city you know? understood understood okay okay that's good okay so so, so next time a second district 
constituent gets a cost yes. estimate that'll be in there that mm -hmm. like bordered saying we'll right. call it the, the hogan clause I, you know i think it's not bad i like that i like it okay no absolutely we want to be transparent with folks to let them know some people are willing to pay but they should know that a they municipal sidewalk program exists okay thank you thank you all right so next the next three items are in regards to agreements for fueling yep these are all <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a uh, hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, charges of the service agreement. That's you. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let me. How do you move this, James? Oh, bend it. So in the middle. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. All right. So I'm a little yeah. taller than she is. So these are all uh, fuel agreements uh, with the county, the school district, and the housing authority where we bill them for the fuel plus uh, yeah. six cent per gallon uh, admin charge. Okay. Uh, any questions on this one? Or are these three, I should say, because they're all essentially the same thing. <clears throat> no? Okay. All, all in favor, we'll move all three of them onto the agenda. For the record, I like the 90s Adams family as well. That's right. I'd say I like the Bears, uh, you know, lanyard, but go Bills. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you should. <laughs> All right. Uh, agreement for parking spaces in the Fayette Garage. Afternoon, Counselor. So this is entering into agreement with Little Dakota LLC, who are just taking over um, the building. We had an agreement with the previous building owner. Okay. So this person is the new owner is just entering a new agreement. Um, I did check with law. There is no provision in this particular agreement for them to terminate early unless, you know, the building is sold or something happens. But, um, you know, we have the right to um, terminate if we choose, but they do not. And so this would be for eight spots, 24 hour monthly parking uh, for a period of 10 years um, The at the current reserved rate, which is $95. But obviously, if that changes from the council, then and it's just the same eight spots that the previous yes no yeah it's just transferring who we have the agreement with okay um are there any questions on this one what building is this what's that what building is it it's the um uh 315 montgomery street okay uh make a motion to put this one on the agenda all in favor all right yeah great okay thank you all right the next the rest of it looks like it's all engineering items. So, Creek Walk improvements, uh, row good agreement. Yep. Good afternoon, counselors. Mary Robinson, city engineer. Uh, first one is two items, actually. We're kind of rearranging our agreements with New York State DOT. We originally had authorized an agreement not to exceed $350,000, and that included some right of way expenses. So we're reducing the $350,000 agreement down to $303,000 and doing a separate agreement for $47,000 for the right-of-way expenses. And the reason for this is DOT wants a separate agreement because they do the right-of-way acquisition for us and we pay them our 20%. Um, and the rest of the agreement, we incur all the expenses and then get the reimbursement. Okay. So it's kind of, we're shuffling money from one agreement and splitting it up into two agreements so instead of one agreement for three hundred fifty thousand, we have an agreement for 303 and, and an agreement for 47. all right are there any questions on this one seems fine. no okay we'll move that one on uh next item is uh, another amendment to design agreement with cns for the mill and pave on east yes Colvin. this is east colvin street mill and pave from salina to jamesville we're amending the agreement to add the detailed design phase for $225,000 for total cost not to exceed $464,000. Um, we are getting 80% reimbursement from the feds, 15% Marchicelli, and then 5% local. Okay. Any questions on this one? No? Motion to put it on? All in agreement? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the next item is for the downtown streets mill and pave the cur projects currently in construction um, we're doing work on um, geez Warren Street and Montgomery Street with our mill and pave project and the state has asked us to um, do some 
wireless vehicular and pedestrian detection systems for them at Adams and Warren and Adams and Montgomery. So we're amending the agreements to add $50,000, which is 100% reimbursable. Okay. Any questions on this one? No. Okay. Let's go on to the, now the Meadowbrook sewer study grant. Uh, this is an EFC grant um, to do the Meadowbrook sewer study. It's a $50,000 grant. Um, $10,000 local share so we need ordinances to execute for the mayor to execute the grant agreement authorization of the $10,000 local match which will be in-kind services with DPW and engineering staff um, and then the seeker type 2 action and this kind of goes with the county's um, consent order on the Meadowbrook Limestone uh, wastewater treatment plant that is currently um, that they currently have with DEC, and we're trying to determine basically where are where the best places to do um, sewer lining projects, best bang for our buck type of thing. So I'm sorry, I don't have all this in front of me, but it's a study. We're commissioning it, or is the county? Are we doing it jointly, or how? How's this working? Um, it's a grant that we obtained, so we'll be running the grant. But we are working, you know, advising the county of that we we have advised the county that we have the grant, um, and we will certainly be working with them on the information that we find out. And the study is to determine where we can most effectively line the sewers. That's yes, okay. to gain the most, stop the most infiltration and uh, flows going to the treatment plant. Because I, I just remember a couple of years back and part of this discussion was, you know, the county has the consent order mm -hmm. because of the wastewater. Um, and part of the contributing factor is the fact that our sewers do have leaks, leaks right? And that's part yeah. of it. But also the county's in charge of wastewater and they could spend money on an additional treatment plan if they wanted to. Right, right? but I believe the consent order has them committing to doing so much um, inflow and infiltration projects. To eliminate that part of the problem yeah I just want to make sure we're in control I don't want it to be a situation where the county gets the consent order and then they immediately turn around and be like and it's the city's fault and you pay for all the you know that's I just want to make sure we're always on top of that a little bit it's yeah we have been talking with the county and we're open to doing something with them but we thought this study um, would be good information to have so that we knew the most effective areas to do pro to spend any mo money how much of the ARPA money has, in, in discussion or in, or in practice, is, is intended for addressing? Is, is this study in any way incorporated into trying to make some hay while the sun shines while we have the ARPA money? I don't think any ARPA money to date is Has been up. allocated, yeah. No. That's what I was going to say. I don't think, I haven't heard any discussions. I was just curious if we had that on the radar if that was in the plans. I think part of it is um, also a, a waiting to see, part of the reason why there wasn't as, as um, I think waiting to see whether or not the infrastructure bill comes through, I think would allow us to um, put some more funding into sewer and water infrastructure. Obviously there's a significant amount of ARPA money that's going towards water infrastructure, but a smaller percentage going towards sewers because I think we're really hopeful that um, that the infrastructure bill will come through and be able to um, make available funding to us. But at the same time, the ARPA plan is a plan. And so, you know, if we do need to pivot to address some more of our sewer infrastructure, if the if the infrastructure bill does appear to fail, then, you know, then we can reassess at that point. So, but I think we, we've all got some hopes in the infrastructure bill. A lot of hopes. Okay. Yeah. I'll, you know. There's no, there's no harm in hoping. Right? Does the infrastructure bill allow the construction of lacrosse or soccer stadiums? <laughs> a lot of hope for a lot of infrastructure. Only money. if it's in a suburban area. Oh, okay. Good, good to know. <laughs> All right. So uh, next item is accepting the lining for two sewer manholes. Yes, this is the uh, rescue mission project, which is now called the PIDA multi-use project on uh, Solar and Division Street. And they'll be lining two sewer manholes and replacing two framing covers on the 700 block of North Clinton. Any questions on this one? Oh, sure. Okay, great. We'll move that on. 
Uh, next one is again accepting the lining of uh, for the Wellington Place apartments. Yep, and this is all to meet the county sanitary sewer one-on-one -on -one offset. Um, these three items. Uh, so this was to line the sewers on the 300 block of Foreman and the 800 block of Wellington Place, lining 15-inch sewers, sewer and uh, two sewer manholes. Okay, any, any questions on that one? Yep. On those three, actually? So. No? Okay, we'll put those all on, and uh, I believe those are all of uh, my items. Uh, I do have the revocable oh. permission for... Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I've, the the revocable permission, the sanitary sewer offset, which is lining two sewers and two sewer manholes on Wolf Street, um, and then same project, Moyer Carriage Lofts, is a revocable permission to construct, own, and operate and maintain seven parking spaces along the 1900 block of Park Street. Okay. Are there any questions on those items? I just had a question, Mary, for those of us that don't understand what a lining does like wh how what does that actually does that give it like a new lease on you know what does the lining actually accomplish when when implemented it it, it kind of it for, it's a form of rehabilitation and it prevents um, the inflow and infiltration of uh, exterior water getting into the sewer and which how long would offset the, the additional sanitary flow that they're adding as a result of their project so is it kind of, uh, so it improves the quality of, of It improves the structure yeah. um, and also prevents leaking pipes. And how long does an upgrade like that last generally? I know it's probably hard to say, right? There's probably a variable, but if you had to say on average. Uh, I'm not really sure, but I'd say at least 25 years. Okay. I think I've Thank read you. that. Any other questions on the lawyers? I just got a question of uh, maybe Corey. Uh, Corey, you don't have to. You could, if with and with Mary here, if we do get if we do get <laughs> infrastructure money, would there be like <laughs> if if we do get infrastructure money? Yes. What, I mean, and we don't know if the money be be available or not. But there be some thought given to staffing and like engineering in the law department. Yeah, absolutely. To give them extra help because of the amount and volume of work that Mary brings before us all the time, uh, with and with ARPA money. Yeah. And plus, if we get infrastructure money. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think yeah, if we were given infrastructure money, um, I think we would have to look at the our staffing bandwidth because I know even. You know, even the water department, with the amount of projects that they have going on right now, they're they're pushed to the brink. And obviously, Mary and her team are always um, stretched in terms of resources. So I think we would have no choice but to look at you know staffing resources to assist us because, um, particularly if there's the, you know, we would want to spend that money as quickly as we can. And so in order to do that and balancing several projects at once, you know, uh, engineering has a lot of big projects coming up next year as well. So I think we'd have to. And we, we, you know, we have an expected public out there. When they see oh, of that course. money, they want to see that money used. And they yeah, want to see unless it means downtown there. construction. And sometimes downtown they don't want to see Downtown construction is nice if you can use it <laughs> in like a, a way that doesn't you know, close businesses. Yeah, I agree. So. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. All right. Those are my items. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you. We have a skeleton crew here. We finished. What's that? We have, we have six of us. Yeah. They're currently on the agenda. Yeah. You're not supposed to, but as pro temp, absent the president, I'm not the facto member of every committee. So, see, that's why you should be there. Because you know that stuff. <laughs>